I'm Hazel. It is almost Saturday, so welcome to vlog time. Uh, first thing I would like to say, happy Canada Day, everybody. It is July 1st, which makes it Canada Day. Um, happy Canada Day to all of my friends um, up north at home and anybody who's not up north that wants to celebrate too. I mean, Canada Day is great. Uh, from what I remember from back when I lived in Canada, we used to do Canada Day. We'd pretty much just go to downtown Victoria. There'd be a bunch of people down there. Everybody would be drinking. And uh, lots of those little fake uh, stick-on tattoos, lots of people with little Canada tattoos. And that was all I remember, but it was a blast, so uh, happy Canada Day. And then it is so good to have internet. You have no idea. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you also had your internet go out and had, like, a spiritual experience as you realize how much of your life relies on it. But holy butts, it's so nice to be back online. I never noticed, and I guess I, I like it, it wasn't surprising to me, but I never really completely clicked into how much of my life is online until my internet was gone. So to tell the whole story, um, Thursday morning, I was just working and, and I think I was playing Hearthstone before I actually started work and, you know, drinking my tea and it was fine. And then um, the internet stopped working and it's like, okay, it's fine. Maybe it's, it was um, showing up on, on my computer as a DNS error. So I tried, um, I tried writing through different DNS servers and that didn't work. And I figured, oh, well, okay, fine. Maybe Frontier's just down. Maybe they're just they're just not having a good morning, and that's okay. They'll get back up. And I waited, and then it didn't work. And then we called somebody, and that didn't work. And then we troubleshot, and we troubleshot again, and we restarted things, and we just went through all of this effort trying to figure out what the problem was, and nobody could figure it out. And it turns out it wasn't Frontier servers. Eventually, what we did figure out after like five days of being offline is that it was something that had happened when a Frontier tech came to our apartment complex to hook somebody else up, had done something to take us offline. And, like, nobody could figure that out. And it's, we didn't get back online until, like, Monday morning. And it turns out my whole life's online. All of the TV shows and movies that we watch are online. All of the music that I listen to is streamed. All of my friends are online. My entire social life is completely online. Uh, my job, making videos, my work is online, so I can't work. Uh, free time entertainment, our, you know, Hearthstone, WoW, Overwatch, pretty much all online. Uh, news, weather, like, pretty much everything that I do didn't work real good without the internet. So we had, I, we, I found myself with, like, just a bunch of time to kill and not really all that much to do. So I cleaned voraciously. Um, the first day that it was down, I gave the apartment, I thought it was going to come back up the next day. So I figured I'll just get the apartment super clean and just, like, clean a bunch of stuff that you would never normally think to clean. And then I'll have a really nice apartment to get back online on tomorrow. And that didn't happen. But anyways, I cleaned really good. And then, uh, yeah, we watched a bunch of DVDs. Good thing we have some of those lying around from, you know, 10 years ago. And uh, I played a bunch of Dark Souls 3. This was my chance to play Dark Souls 3 because you can play it completely offline. So I got caught up on that. And the unfortunate side effect of that is I'm now kind of re-addicted to Dark Souls 3. It's so good. It's kind of fan service -y, but I'm a, I am really like Dark Souls 1. So whenever it just does something that's like, hey, look, remember we made that game too. I'm just like, aha, I remember. Look at you. You're like a little fat onion knight. And it's just, it's great. So I played a bunch of Dark Souls. Um, I had a headache the whole time, which is very strange. I'm calling it an internet withdrawal headache. It was probably just stress or possibly dehydration. Like whenever I'm using the computer or online or gaming or working, or whatever, I always have a water bottle with me. I swear I refill this thing like five times a day. So I drink huge amounts of water and I wasn't doing that. I had a much harder time drinking as much water when the internet was out. So maybe that was why. But anyways, I'm back online now and it is so good to be back to everything. Um, I really missed Overwatch, I missed making videos, I missed talking to people, and it's just, it's just great now. So, I have a newfound appreciation for the internet. Um, I've been back at making WoW videos, I've been making, I've been focusing lately, and you probably noticed, on Legion pet guides. So there are quite a few different Legion pet encounters. It's not like in Draenor when WoW first launched and there were six new pet tamers and that was kind of it. Um, there's, I think, close to 30 different um, pet encounters through the world quest. They're not all master tamers. There are, I believe, 15 master tamers. But then there's a bunch more that are kind of Beasts of Fable style legendary wild pet encounters. Or not wild pet encounters, but like pet encounters in the world. Um, and the neat thing that I'm kind of noticing is that they're not, like, none of these things are guaranteed to be available on any given day. If you want to, like, go do a tamer for an achievement... Chances are you just can't. Uh, so the way it works, um, and, it, and you can't really do much of any of it until you're level 110. Um, when you reach 110, uh, you look at your map, and you've unlocked World Quest at that point. They're automatically unlocked when you reach 110. You look at your map, and then you, you search the different zones until you find the different three pet battle World Quests. They're going to be three in any given day. And those can be anything from beat a Master Tamer to beat one of these little legendary pet things. Um, one of them might be in Dalaran, which makes it kind of nice because you don't have to run too far. 
And then there's a couple of them, not too many, but a couple of them that are like zone specific that say beat these three different wild pets and you have to go hunt down the wild pets and beat them. Uh, they give pretty variable rewards. The rewards are pretty underwhelming. Um, they give you things like battle pet bandages and quality upgrade stones and sometimes like big chunks of pet charms, but it seems pretty random as to what the rewards are. But the nice thing is that they do count towards your emissary objective quest. So if you're a pet battler um, and you go do all your pet battles, Every day, you're going to have some progress towards completing the rest of your emissary bonus cash, that whole, like, Diablo 3 bounty style play. So that's kind of nice. Um, I'm not sure how... I think it's going to be annoying in terms of, like, one, making guides because I can't access everything on any given day, so I have to kind of luck of the draws to what's going to come up. And secondly, I think it's going to be kind of irritating for working on Family Familiar, which is the achievement that requires you to be 12 of the 15 Master Tamers using family-specific teams from each and every family. Uh, it's going to be like, there might be a day where you're like, okay, I really need to f fight Zorvask with aquatic pets, but you know, Zorvask ain't up and you could be waiting a long time for it to pop up because there's so many different possibilities. So that's kind of a thing. But in any case, um, every time I log on to the beta to test the pet battles, mostly I get so hyped for Legion. I'm so excited. Um, estimates put the pre-patch on July 19th. Again, I will reiterate that is not a confirmed date. They haven't said when the pre-patch is going to be, but chances are based on the timing of everything. Um, three weeks from is, is a pretty good bet. And oh my gosh, I need it. I'm so excited. Uh, and we're 60 days out from Legion at this point. We're two months until Legion. Uh, so I hope everybody's kind of sort of starting to get ready. Um, I'm pretty much just focusing on videos for now. Uh, there's a very good, I'm, I've got like all these salvage crates saved up, and I've talked about this before. I've got all these salvage crates saved up to open after the pre-patch. And somebody made a good point that if you're if you're sitting on a bunch of salvage crates to open before the pre-patch, and you have a bunch of bag space, um, it might you might be better off opening them before the pre-patch because the gold vendor value of follower armor and follower weapon upgrade items is being cut down significantly when when the pre-patch drops. So uh, make sure you a you vendor all that extra stuff that you saved up, all your like weapon and armor enhancements for your followers before the pre-patch drops. But if you have the bag space, it might be worth it to open your crates so that you can vendor those things for the higher price. I don't think I'm going to do that because I have so many salvage crates that I don't actually have any bag space. And I really don't like the solution of just like mailing a bunch of stuff to alts and having it hanging. I'm just going to get so overwhelmed with how much stuff I have because I have almost 10,000 salvage crates at this point. And I'm not really hurting for gold. I hit gold cap today, actually. Like, just this morning, doing my garrison dailies, I realized I could not pick up any more gold on my bank alt character because she has a million gold. So, um, that's another thing I'm looking forward to for the pre-patch. I'll be able to actually hold, hold, hold more gold. So, yeah. My money's, my money's on the 19th. Um, three weeks. We can do it. We can all do it together. We all have Overwatch to play. Um, everybody, everybody that I know is playing Overwatch. I even talked my husband into playing it. He wasn't gonna. He hates PvP games. He doesn't really like shooters. And he only really likes, like, role-playing games that have, um, like, RPG elements that are, like, character progression and gear and things like that, which, of course, which Overwatch has none of because it's just not that kind of game. And he still got it anyway, so uh, everybody's playing Overwatch, and it is a great thing to do while killing time waiting for the WoW stuff to come out. Speaking of Overwatch, Competitive came out. That was, like, what, two days ago? Uh, it has been a bit of a mess, but for the most part, it works pretty good. I did all my placement matches. Um, I did a bunch of them. I did the first four with like a full group of six and that was terrible because we weren't a very good group of six. We were just six people that were like kind of sort of playing Overwatch and uh, we kept getting matched against people that had crazy coordination. We just got stomped on four times in a row. But after that, it was just me and a buddy and we did pretty good. We went about 50-50 for the remaining matches. So I ended up placing at rank 47, uh, which I think makes me very solidly average, which I'm fine with. I'm not terribly concerned about being good at Overwatch. I played mostly Mercy. I started to realize that in Overwatch, I, I'm pretty much a Mercy main. She's just good in everything, and not many people want a player. And she's she's just the most fun for me. So whenever I get a chance to play Mercy, I will. And yeah, I'm rank 47. I haven't done any competitive since ranking, like since placing. Um, I believe your ranks are going to kind of shuffle. I'm kind of waiting for them to finish fixing things. There was a big bug where um, King of the Hill maps, like where you're both fighting for the one control point, weren't rewarding proper... MMR upgrades or something? I don't know. I'm just kind of waiting for them to smooth all the bugs out. And then Quick Play is just kind of kind of more more my thing. I don't really feel a need. Like, the only rewards, after you've done your placement matches, of course, the only rewards for doing competitive Overwatch are the golden guns. And you have to win 300 games to get one gun. And, like, they're not even that noticeable. I mean, I guess they're kind of cool. But I'm kind of holding on to all of my, my competitive points. <laughs> all, like, four of them. I'm holding on to my competitive points, and I'm holding on to my um, my gold in hopes that they're going to add some cool new stuff that I'll want more than the stuff I have currently available. But in any case, Overwatch is a blast, and competitive mode seems to work pretty good. Um, I had a couple of games where I've actually, like, up until this point, I've pretty much just been either playing with friends or playing on quick play, but not in, like, the voice chat, or at least nobody's using the voice chat um, with pugs. 
And I played a couple of games recently where I was actually in voice chat with Pugs coordinating things, and that was weird. It's so strange just talking to random people, but it worked really good. We did really well once we started communicating. And, uh, and yeah, it's kind of neat. What else is going on? Um, the BlizzCon Qualifier WoW Arena Cups have been happening. We already had the first one. The second one, I believe, is happening this weekend, and they are so exciting to watch. I am so blown away by the level of gameplay that's coming out of those Qualifier Cups. Um, they're super cool to watch. I'm... I'm steadfastly cheering for my teams. I'm pretty much cheering for Splice at this point because because uh, I love Splice. They're my team. I'm going to be really sad if they get knocked out early. Um, after that, I'm pretty much just after the Korean teams. But uh, yeah, super cool to watch. Um, always gets me excited to play more Arena. And it's just neat to see people that are just that disgustingly good at WoW. Like, it's, it, it's hard when you watch it to really get a sense of everything that's going on. But sometimes you'll see a play and you'll just be like, the foresight somebody must have had to do some of the things they do is just nuts. Anyways, um, that's that. Uh, what else? All right, so questions from uh, not last week, but the week before, because I don't think I got any questions on my last week 22nd vertical video vlog. Apologies for the vertical video, by the way. I'd never made a video before on my phone, uh, and I was very overwhelmed and had, like, one shot at it, basically, because of the data upload. Anyways, um, questions. Uh, OTT asks, are you going to play the new DLC for Don't Starve Shipwrecked? So I don't know how new it is. I know it's out. I don't have it yet, actually. I think I'd have to buy it if I was going to do that. Um, if I do revive a Don't Starve Let's Play at any point, I will do so with the DLC, especially because, like, the last time I revived it was for Reign of Giants. So it would make sense to, to do a new one, a new Don't Starve set of videos for the Shipwreck DLC. But I'm not going to be doing it anytime soon just because of how much is going on right now with Legion. Uh, so I will probably play it eventually, but I would not hold your breath because you might die. You need to, you need to breathe to live. Uh, Lee Bib asks, Hazel, have you got an ethereal soul trader pet? What happens with the new pet mirror in ethereal soul trader? Does the pet have an animation while draining a soul? What? Uh, I do have the, the ethereal soul trader pet. Um, I've, I bought that a while ago. What happens with the new pet mirror and the soul trader? Does the pet have an animation when draining a soul? So I can I can test the pet mirror and, and soul trader thing right now. Uh, I uh, does I have no I did not know that the pet could drain souls. Is that a thing that it does? Hang on, let me just let me just soul trader pet mirror. Let's just hop on the beta, and I'll find out real quick. Um, I, I don't know about the draining soul thing. Is it, like do you kill a critter? Does it kill critters? Okay, so I can actually flip it over. We're gonna find out in real time. Does this work? Oh god. Alright, well, I have a big camera. That's fine. Uh, so there's my Soul Trader pet. Uh, here is Pet Mirror. And... He does not... Pet Mirror does not work in Ethereal Soul Trader. Maybe they'll change that in beta, or when beta ends, but as of right now, no bueno. Okay, that's that. Uh, Beercake390 asks, What are your thoughts on the rest of Druid changes in PvP and Legion? Do you think they will still be a very valuable healer? So having taken a basic look through the Restored Druid changes and then like the other class changes, I think that Restored Druids are still going to be a very strong healer, probably top three um, for threes in Legion, especially um, healers up until this point have felt very weak on beta, but they recently, very recently made a change that uh, fixed a pretty significant problem that made them do like 30% less healing or something like that. So they should be more effective now. Um, I think they'll be really valuable. I don't have a whole lot of evidence to back that up. I haven't done a whole lot of PvP on Legion lately. Um, I've only looked at like the changes on paper. I haven't really tried it out. And I'm based on how quickly they make tuning changes still, I'm, I'm going to kind of have a wait and see sort of approach to Legion PvP. I've never been one to pick up new things very quickly video game wise. It always takes me quite a while to learn new stuff in games. So with all these class changes and with pretty much every class getting huge changes, I'm going to be pretty much relearning how, like, the the ability side of PvP. And I don't anticipate I'm going to do that very quickly. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to level my druid first. Because I have a buddy that's going to be leveling with me on launch. And I may as well just get the druid leveled. And then I'm going to level my writing character and just kind of do PvE stuff for a bit. And sort of keep an eye on what everybody's doing for PvP. I'll probably grind out my honor talents on that druid. And see what's going on in battlegrounds and things like that. But as far as actual arena strategy and talents... And just, like, things that you do. I'm mostly going to be looking to people that are more experienced than myself to see kind of how the meta shakes out early on. And then kind of adopt it once it's become a thing. Because it's going to take me a while to catch on to everything new. So I may as well let other people do the really heavy grunt work of figuring out what works. So I think they're going to be good. But everything's kind of a toss-up at this point. Jeff asks, can you do an Overwatch game or gameplay? 
So Overwatch videos are definitely something that's kind of on my radar. I've definitely been playing a lot of Overwatch, but like other games I play, for example, I've been playing a lot of Hearthstone lately, but I haven't made any Hearthstone videos. Until I have like a format or reason to do a video, like something that I want to express or something I want to talk about or something I want to show people, um, I don't know how good videos of just me playing Overwatch would be. It's possible that I will do some Overwatch videos, but I don't have any specific plans for them right now because there's so much Legion stuff going on. And because Overwatch videos, like gameplay videos, just kind of Let's Play style Overwatch gameplay videos are kind of done to death. So I'm more likely to do like compilation videos of like weird Mercy plays or just when I have something to say, I'll say it. But until then, um, I don't have any super unique perspective on Overwatch that I think anybody would find interesting. So one day, but probably not yet. And that has been my week, so let me know what you think. If you have any questions you would like answered on a vlog, just leave them as comments on the most recent vlog, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!